there's been a, a few studies and I'm going to get the percentages off a little bit here, but like how many of over the counter nutraceuticals slash supplements actually have as much of the ingredient in them as they say, or yeah. don't even, and then how many are just completely adulterated. And it's somewhere like 30 to 40%, depending on which source you're looking at, of over-the-counter nutraceuticals have that issue. So it's like, be really careful once you do to, to find a good quality source. Dr. Mindy here. Your body is in a, in a war zone. <laughs> Different parts yes. of the brain get activated depending upon how stressed you are. When you look at it from that inflammatory. That's interesting. I mean, that has some merit to it for sure. And you can't control everything. Yeah, say. And what about the uh, a woman who is not pregnant, but she's aiming? Yeah, let me start, Dr. Yoshi, by welcoming you to the Resetter podcast. Thank you for joining me here. Thank you so much. I'm just super honored to be with you now for everyone else. Dr. Yoshi's clinic is called Oasis Family Medicine, and this is the Ibu Master. We have been talking about Ibu on this podcast, so I have to start off by thanking you for that because that has been, Ibu has been a game changer, game changer for so many people. So appreciate that you are offering that. Yeah, it's a, it's an exciting uh, modality for sure. It's not the whole picture, but it is yeah. a potential game changer when there's a nice baseline to hold it up. Yeah, agreed, agreed. You know, integrative medicine has changed dramatically in the last 10 years. And our appreciation for th things like supplements and IVs have dramatically changed. So one of the criticisms that I see with integrative medicine and one of the criticisms, not just from other doctors, but also from patients is the overuse of supplementation. And I think the supplement world is a wild, wild west world. <laughs> And I personally, I don't know, I never told you, I don't think I ever told you this, that there was a time period I thought, I can't find a good supplement, I'm gonna create my own supplement. And so I started to search for, for products that I could blend together that were free of heavy metals, that hadn't had been sprayed with pesticides, that were food-based, they weren't synthetic. And that was really hard to find. And I finally at that moment was like, oh, that's not my field, the only way I would go into the supplement business would be if I could create it from scratch where I was actually growing the ingredients. So, mm. so I understand how dirty supplements can be. I understand how people use supplements and they don't know why they're just using them. And I also know that people can spend a lot of money on IV drips, same way, and still have no formula or ethos in which to use those supplements. So how about I, we start off with, where do you see supplements in somebody's healing journey? Yeah, especially in this world that we're in, like you alluded to. And I, there's been a, a few studies, and I'm gonna get the percentages off a little bit here, but like no how many of over-the-counter nutraceuticals slash supplements actually have as much of the ingredient in them, as they say, mm, or yeah. don't even? And then how many are just completely adulterated? And it's somewhere like 30 to 40%, depending on which source you're looking at, That's of over-the-counter nutraceuticals have that issue. So A, it's like be really careful once you do to, to find a good quality source. And then- how, and, but, but wait, before you move on to that, yeah. how do you find that good quality source? Because I've had a lot of people ask me that. Yeah, there are these kind of these doctor product lines and there's a number of them now. I think one of the first ones was Metagenics, right? And there's mm -hmm. Pure Encapsulations and there's the Designs for Health and uh, Zymogens. And, and there's a, a lot of other ones now as well. A lot of yeah. good quality ones. And so you just really want to get tapped into that world. There are a lot of choices now. But if you're just talking about going to Vons or Rite Aid or something and picking up the over-the-counter or buying on Amazon, you know, you run into the risk of getting those adulterated products. Yeah. And by and just so we fill everybody in, by doctor products, you mean you can only have a doctor's license to buy it. 
Right. And and there those brands are the brands that typically are better than what you can get on Amazon or like you said yeah. in the supermarket. And it's because they're putting that extra like they cost a little bit more but they're using that extra cost, right, to mm. put the efforts into getting cleaner products. So true. Which at so the true. end of the day that's like if you're going to pay for something you got to have it be quality. That's right. Yeah. That's right. And then the other thing is you know, I, I used to see people come in to me to begin with, you know, and they they would literally bring in their bag of medications with 10, 15, 20 medications. And then, you know, for a while I got into the trap of, okay, here's your 10, 15, 20 supplement bottle. Yes. Oh my God. Right? Yes. Like I've, I've, I'm guilty of that over a yeah. time period. Now I've gone away from that because... I don't want to, it's like supplements can still be a band-aid approach. They can yeah. still cover up a deeper lying issue. Yeah. Now, we also live in a severely toxic world. Yes, we do. And our detoxification pathways are not what they need to be usually yep. to live yep. in the world that we live in. We don't live in cave woman times where the earth is pristine and we're chemical free. Where, I mean, you walk outside, well, you walk inside your house and it's like you're bombarded by thousands of chemicals in the air. Same when you walk outside, right? And so it's like every breath we take, we are taking in toxins. And so I do believe that there is a space for nutraceuticals and supplements and vitamins and herbs. The question is, how do we, how do we tailor that? How do we make it a really personalized experience so that you're taking maybe the top one or two or three or, you know, depending where you are at in life. I mean, if you're if you're pretty healthy, maybe it's only one or two or three. If you're going through a situation, there might be a time period where we have you on more products to begin with. But the goal should be to get off of those products Agreed. and use the lifestyle, right? Like. Yep getting, I mean, you know, as well as anybody about proper food, right? Um, yep. Timing, quality, quantity, the awareness around it. Um, yep. And then you just kind of go through the, the sleeping, the moving, right? The the photobiomodulation, right? There's all these devices out there. Well, walk outside. There's this thing in the sky <laughs> that glows. That, yep. is our, that is our photobiomodulation device. Yes. Right? Yes. It even goes red. It even goes it, red in the morning and it goes red at night. <laughs> right when right when we need it, right? That's it's, right. It's amazing. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and then it's like EMF. We're bombarded by these EMF. Well, go outside, take your shoes off and ground, right? Yes. Electrical discharge within seconds, like yes. immediately, right? Yes. Breathing, the, the air right below our nose, it's free. Yeah. And there's different ways of breathing to affect different changes, whether you're going for more of a sympathetic, parasympathetic oxygen or CO2, right? That's a whole podcast in and of itself. And then you get into connection and community and spirituality Ooh, and yep. something grander and just awareness, like yes. having awareness. So few people have awareness, right. but it's like when you eat something, right, you're, you're, state of awareness, your happiness levels, like that's just as important as far as I can tell as what you're eating. And so there's so much there. Yeah, I'm so happy you said that because that is one thing that I've been is sort of, I call it an elevation of the conversation I've been having with my following about food has been, we put so much effort into, am I eating the right food? Did I get the right macro? You know, and it's like become diet, the, the diet culture is so rigid, but nobody ever says like, who am I eating with? Am I, am I sitting in a relaxed state and eating? Like the environment matters as much as, as actual food. So I'm so happy you brought that up. And I also wanna point out, I love that we're starting this discussion with some simple things you can do that, you know, when you look at supplements, I see people that are like not sleeping, they're not getting outside, they're, they're not getting, they're not walking, they're not grounding. There's so many things they're not doing. And then they're spending thousands of dollars on supplements, hoping that supplement is going to bring them back into balance. So I, I love what you just ran through because that was a beautiful explanation of, are you doing those things first? And then now the supplement may have a chance of actually helping heal you. Yeah. 
So true. So, okay. So if you are already got your lifestyle dialed in, like, where do you go from there? Like, are there certain supplements that you're like, hey, these are musts for everybody? You know, I'm going to diverge a little bit from what most of my (laughs) colleagues might say. Like, most are going to say your omegas, your vitamin Mm -hmm. D. I think you ought to test those levels first. Ooh, okay. I really do. Like, objective data speaks volumes. Otherwise, it's just a blanket statement. And so yes. there's all these, you go on YouTube and, and Instagram, and there's there's these like, here's my here I'm a famous person with my top list of supplements. Right? Yes. And it's like, those are really good as a general advice, right? But again, how do we how do we tailor? How do we personalize? And that's where objective data beats wins every time. Because I'll tell you, when I was swimming outside three days a week for like a few years, my vitamin D without supplementation got up to 98. Oh, wow. Now that is, I mean, like, holy cow. I don't even like when people supplement with vitamin D for it to be up at 98. What's the upper end that you'd want to see? Yeah. For me, I like vitamin D levels, if someone's supplementing, to be like 40 to 60. Mm. Unless we're in a cancer situation or a really severe autoimmune situation. Should I have been taking vitamin D at the time? Absolutely not, right? There's too much of anything is toxic. Yes. That goes for oxygen. It goes for water. I mean, you drink 10 gallons of water right now or even just a gallon like that, and you're going to get some real imbalances. and. Well so everything is a poison or a medicine, in, and it all depends on dosing. Yeah. And same with omegas. I, I do see some people who actually just through diet have beautiful omega levels. So why are you going to go out and take a supplement, spend that money, swallow the big horse pill, right? right. So yeah. I, I really, it's, it, for me, it's objective data. So the omega thing is really interesting and you and I haven't discussed this, but it's a good discussion to have. Yeah. I, there's a balance. There's omega three, six and nine balance that needs to happen. Mm -hmm. And one of the things I've heard some omega fatty acid experts say is that if you are eating a diet that has brought the harmful omega six down, sixes down. So this is like your standard Western, you know, Western American diet. If you're not eating those harmful oils where your omega six is really, really high, then supplementing with an omega-3 if you have a clean diet by itself yeah exactly tips the 369 scale yeah so all the studies ever done on omega-3 fatty acids how important they are are only really that beneficial if you're eating a toxic diet but once you clean that up you need a supplement that's omega-3 69 balance not omega-3 by itself yeah Exactly. I mean, it's it's we can look at these levels in isolation and say, okay, here's a reference range. Oh, yeah. here's the functional medicine reference range. Yes. But it's also about ratios, as yeah. as you just stated. So completely agree. Completely. I used concur. to in my clinic. The first thing I did is take everybody off their omega threes because I was like, we're going to change your diet. We're going to work on getting that down naturally. And now if you're mega dosing omega threes, we've thrown the whole system off. That was like yeah. literally the first thing I took away. So yeah, yeah. I, I, I love it. That's, that's how I think. Like I want to establish a baseline, an objective baseline of where someone's really at and then go through the lifestyle modifications and then kind of get a new baseline. Right. right? And, yeah. and it's not about making everything perfect. Like, we live busy, hectic, chaotic lives. Yeah. I mean, you, you can't get an A plus in every lifestyle category, right? Or true. very few people can. Yeah. It's not realistic to expect that. But it's like, okay, what are the levers that can make the most difference? And let's try to get Bs, B pluses in all categories, and then a few As, and maybe even an A plus or two in each yeah. in, in the right. couple of categories, and then get the new baseline. And then you can supplement. Right. Is there a test you like that is an accurate test? Because I've, I've had a lot of people say, well, this, the tests are not accurate. Mm-hmm. So I, I used metabolomics for a while. So I don't know if there's a test that you like that will give you a good reading. So interesting, like the Dunedin pace of aging. 
Mm. That's an interesting test out there okay. as like a one marker. Where are you? How fast are you aging? At what, what rate are you aging at? Are you ra- aging at 10 months for every calendar year? Are you aging at 14 months for every calendar year? But that doesn't give you like, oh, you're low on this or high on this right. or toxic on that, right? And so that's where there are a lot of tests coming out. Iolo, like they, they test hundreds of these biomarkers. Mm. And uh, the metabolomics, like I like that test. I think there's, you know, hormone testing, right? It's like there's different labs have different capabilities. And when one lab starts testing everything, their accuracy might not be totally true, oh, right? That's a, and, that and, is a and it's really like, interesting way to look at it. Are you going to test urine? Are you going to test blood? Are you going to test saliva? How accurate are all of these things? And this is like, I, I don't know is the answer because I'm like literally learning that every week. Right. I learn right. something else, right? Yeah. About how to yeah. test better. And so I think it's just do the best we know how right now knowing that something better is going to come along. Yeah, and I, love I that. try to stay abreast of what's better. Yeah, I, I love that. And that gives you some wiggle room because I used to always say, like, I'd get so excited about one functional test and then I'd roll it out to my patients and then something else would come around and I'd be like, oh, no, this is better. Right. And you start to, to like look like you're contradicting yourself. But like you said, something new is coming out all the time. Yeah. So. What, what's the difference? So I get my lifestyle based down. I'm testing so that I know what supplements I might need off my current situation. What do we know is the difference between like a capsule, a suppository, a spray up your nose, in your eye, like our friend John yes, Laurence likes Dr. to do, Lawrence, like yeah. he'll go for every orifice. <laughs> yes. Like, you know, is, and then there's IV. Is there a difference in all of those ways of getting these nutrients into you? Yeah, boy, that's a, those are rabbit holes, a rabbit hole down each orifice. <laughs> or, orifice holes. <laughs> so supplements, when you take something orally, it's the question is, you might be putting the right thing in your mouth. The question is, how are you absorbing it? How that's well right. are you absorbing it? Yeah. Right. And so that goes for food, too. You might be eating the most pristine food, but how much of it are you absorbing is the question. Yeah. How's yeah. your stomach acid? How's your gut microbiome? Right. Yep. So and true. so in someone who is like, I'll kind of just segue real quickly into the IVs. Because in someone who their gut is not Mm -hmm. optimized yet, like there's a huge um, kind of hole that could be at least temporarily filled with doing IVs, right? Because when you put something in an IV, it's straight into the blood. Mm -hmm. And it's like 100% or nearly 100% bioavailable right away. Mm -hmm. Versus when you put something, a capsule or a tablet in your mouth, you just don't know how much of that is being absorbed. Right. Yeah. I mean, there's some crummy, crappy quality pills that like actually come out in some people's stool. Right. And that yes. says a lot about their the lack of good digestion, maybe also a little about 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 the quality of the, the tablet as well. But those are or what I was going to say. Also, when somebody's detoxification pathways need to be amped up, that's another great space for the IVs, I find. Yeah. 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 Or. Just in general, when somebody's kind of going through an acute issue or a more severe chronic issue. Would you too. say then if you're like the average, you know, you're listening to this podcast and you're really trying to make smart supplement decisions that it may be as simple. And I know there's a lot each. I want to simplify the healing process. And I know mm-hmm. that's a very difficult thing to do. But if I know I've been on rounds of antibiotics, if I know I've been on birth control for decades. If I bloat every time I eat vegetables and I don't have a bowel movement every day, I have like some real clear signs that my digestion is off. Then maybe the door in, no pun intended, for me with supplements would be a suppository or Mm -hmm. maybe it would be an IV. Like can people make an educated decision just by looking at their history of what might have happened in their microbiome to decide that? Yeah, absolutely. And also part of that is It's like this vicious cycle. And so if you can get a really quality nutrients into your system easily, then it can kind of 
help cut that cycle. And then it makes healing even easier to yes. all of those symptoms that you just described. And when you do a suppository rectally or vaginally, like that mucosa, that that skin, it's skin on the inside of our bodies, that mucosa absorbs nutrients exquisitely. Yes. And so, and that's really the truth of any orifice. It just yeah. tends to absorb it's like a transdermal absorption and it absorbs very well. And almost always, if it's something that will dissolve, it it's actually better absorbed than something taken orally. Right now, something right. Need... So oral would be your last choice. Yeah. Yeah, me too. Yeah, I mean, I've, again, I've depending really on the situation, place. I don't want to yeah. overgeneralize, but. I've really come to that conclusion, too. And I've been taking like supplements since I was a kid when, when I in in my house growing up, so we had electricity. <laughs> I, <laughs> I love that you didn't have electricity, <laughs> but I was also raised by a health freak and who didn't bring any sugar into the house. We didn't have any plastics. Like there was, she, my mom was like a warrior there. And every morning we would get to the breakfast table and there was a customized pack of supplements at each one of our spots at the, at the, at the table. And so I was just part of supplements were just what I took my whole life. And I've come to a place now where I am and I'm like, I prefer a suppository, I prefer a spray or I prefer an IV. I still take the other supplements, but that would, I feel the most immediate difference with those things. And they're easier to do than to remember to keep taking supplements all day. Yeah, I agreed. And you know, there is some patient education. Some people don't want to do it those ways, right? right. And so there's like, okay, let's, there, there is some education that needs to be had around that. But I think it's a huge opportunity for people to really get that, get what they need to the source, right. the source right. to where they need it. Yeah. Yeah. With IVs, something, I, you know, we see this huge IV culture. Like, I feel like we've gone from really resisting IVs, or you only could get an IV if you went to a doctor like you. And now we have franchises, you know, mm -hmm. all over the country here in America, we have a worldwide audience. And I mean, even in Europe, it's easy to get IVs, like, it is so easy to get an IV. So one of my questions is, is what do we need to know about IVs? You know, I have, I, when I look at an IV, I see a plastic bag. And I wonder, is there plastic in that? I also wonder when you're forcing that mu that many nutrients into your body that quickly, can your body absorb it? Like literally when I go and get an IV outside of your guys' place, if I go get them other, where, other places, I'm like, give me the kitchen sink, like put everything in it. And then, and then there's this little voice in the back of my head that's like, but wait, can your body, can the innate intelligence of the body handle all this that you're shoving in? So is, what are some things we need to know about IVs so we can make smart choices? Yeah, I think it's it's a <laughs> you know for a while I like we do a lot of cool different sort of IVs in our office, yeah, so I would not shut down our IVs, but our IV room. But for a while, I kind of considered like, am I am I doing people a service? Am I giving them expensive urine? Yes, right, right. Like that's that was a huge question of mine, and yet when it so first of all, a lot of places do offer just watered down IVs. Like it's mostly just water mm -hmm. with like a little bit of this and a little bit of that because ingredients cost a lot. And mm -hmm. so most franchise IV places really are just watered down. Now there's still maybe I'm not like bad mouthing. There's still a place for that. But you do want to go somewhere where they like are going to put enough in because when somebody is sick, acutely sick, like getting large doses yes. turns people around. Yeah. I mean, you have somebody, like, you know, who has is going through something that looks like the flu or COVID or whatever kind of infectious uh, d disease you want to call it. You can come in, get a get an IV and they walk out feeling so much better. Well, right. that says something. And I mean, yes. this is not like a placebo effect. You can sometimes it's a placebo effect, but you can tell like people are coming in like that yeah. and they walk right. out feeling better or we'll have people go through like a series of ozone um, who are just having these chronic 
autoimmune flare-ups. And it's like they walk out and they do better. Their objective, their biomarkers, their blood tests are better. And so right. it's like we know we know for a fact that these IVs are doing something and that there is a place. Uh, one thing I wish we did, I wish people knew more about doing IVs like pre-surgery and post-surgery. Ooh, like that's yeah. a huge, I, I wish that's another... That's one of those areas where I wish all surgery centers would just give patients like IVs afterwards. So all of our patients at Oasis Family Medicine, like I'm encouraging them to do one or two before surgery just to like plump plump themselves up. Even if they're peeing out the excess, it's like at least fill up those those holes, those deficiencies. So smart. Um, Because it's going to make that surgery, which is a trauma. Yeah. a physical trauma, even though it's yeah. maybe necessary at times, it's still a physical trauma. And so if we can like get that body ready to able to better handle that trauma, great. And then after they've had the trauma, like when our bodies are under stress, we use up nutrients a lot quicker. Ooh, we point. use up our magnesium quicker. We use up our B vitamins quicker. And so it's after the surgery where people really do so they they heal so much better if they do uh, maybe say three IVs. I mean, it could be right. more, maybe it's less depending on the severity of the surgery. But people who do IVs who have come into our office and do a series of IVs after a surgery, they they're, they come back and their surgeons always say, "Oh wow, you're healing really quickly." Again, that tells you something. Like it's right. not just expensive urine. Right. Is there just a general for post-surgery and pre-surgery? You just like get everything, the, the ma- yeah, all the it, minerals, it, all the vitamins. It's kind of the kitchen sink. I mean, yeah, the, the minerals kitchen, and yeah. the vitamins, right? Yeah. But, yeah. Kitchen sink. Yeah. Because I'm not, there's not time to like test, get the objective data, right? right. And just put in the ones that are needed, right? Yeah. We want, we just, we want to throw the, that's a time to throw the kitchen sink at someone. Yeah. There was something you said that made me, I think this is a really interesting point. When we take, a, whether it's a capsule, a suppository, an IV, I always tell people, you should notice a difference when you take a supplement. Yes. If you don't notice a difference, like more energy, you know, even if it's a negative thing, you should notice something that indicates to you, you just took that supplement. And if you don't, there's a large chance that you might not need that supplement, whether it's an IV or a capsule. So would you would yeah. you agree with that? Uh, almost always, like as a categorical statement, I would absolutely agree with that because I, in so many patients, they, they want a protocol, right? Tell yes. me the protocol, just tell me the protocol. And I'm like, try this and yes. see. <laughs> And take yes. note, become aware. Yes. Like your I body did. will tell. You. Yeah. Like chap it. Like that you, okay. You would bring up a really good point. Like, I think that's a left over from the medication world. You know, mm-hmm. think about what happens when you walk into a doctor's office and they say, you have X, Y, and Z. And you go, great. You know what I have? What should I do? And they say, here's the, the medication you should take. And so we just take the prescription, we go, we take the medication, but we've outsourced the healing process to the doctor and to the medication. So we have no internal guidance to tell us, you know, if that was the right thing for us, we just cross our fingers that our symptoms go away. But what you're saying is take it and then check in. Yeah. And you touch on a huge thing there that you just mentioned. It's like, do what the doctor says. The doctor is God type That's right. of mentality. And, you know, I'm a doctor. I've I went through a lot of schooling. I've done a lot of conferences, paid a lot of money to go to these conferences and to learn. And I know a lot, but my job is to be a teacher and to help someone mm-hmm. weigh the pros and the cons. And honestly, like I feel like I think of myself more as a healer. Mm-hmm. And with that, I think comes with hopefully teaching the person to become their own healer. Yeah. And yeah. that awareness is everything. The more we can get people to become aware of that supplement or yeah. aware before they take a bite of food or aware before they go to sleep or that yeah. first thought when they wake up is actual awareness. I mean, our healing potential is exquisite. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. And yeah. so to take away some of that like 
I mean, a doctor, all the doctors I know have gone into it for the right reason. Yes. Right. Right. Yeah. But we're taught that we know best, write that 30 day prescription with 11 refills, come see me in a year, and then I'm going to re- write it again at plus 11 refills. Right. And that's, that's not yeah. the way to heal. Yeah. I had a mentor once tell me that your goal is to educate the patient so much that they no longer need you. Yes. And I, I always kept that in my mind. I still, in everything I do, even in my online world, is how do you keep empowering people and empowering people to heal themselves so they don't need you? I think that that is a complete flip on the system that is like, you need me because I have the best education. I have a tool that only certain people can prescribe for you. Like, it's a, it's a, it's a total flip on that. You know, and, and there's a lot of information coming at us these days, like information, there's no shortage of information, right? And so I think where I'll just speak for myself, where I'm able to help my patients is like, I've listened to so much information. I've learned so much information. And so I can help. I'm, I am best equipped to help that person kind of distill what is good for them. But again, ultimately, it's like, how do we teach them to become aware so they can become exactly what you just said, their yeah. own healers? Their yeah, own and doctors. I and I think that's the kind of conversation people can go into when they're looking for doctors like you who have clinics. So you know, I think it's a good thing that like, is this person teaching me, or is this person just handing me supplements? Even in the natural world, like handing me supplements or handing me medications. So uh, let's. I want to move to because I want to leave plenty of time for my new favorite one, which is I want to go through Ebu and I want to go through Methylene Blue and then a little bit into Ozone. And, and just a little backstory so that people understand why I'm so excited about Ebu is that for years I did supplements that help detox. I mean, my clinic, like half of the clinic, what we were doing is detox. And detox is not pretty always, but the end result is pretty phenomenal. And we did specifically heavy metal detoxing. So one of the ways that I found Dr. Yoshi was I was blessed to work with Leanne Rimes, and she's come on my podcast twice now and explained the the most recent talked about Ebu. And we put her through all the supplements. I put her through all the heavy metal supplements, and it was oak, it worked, it, but it was rough. And that was hard for somebody who's touring to the degree she's touring. She also had her Epstein-Barr virus had just kicked in and fatigue was huge. So I told her, hey, how about we try this thing called Ebu? And it has been a game changer. Like that and methylene blue, just total game changer for her health. So with that in mind, help us understand. And I know every time I come into your office, I'm like, tell me again what this is doing because everybody I send to you all, even the most difficult cases start to improve and it's phenomenal. So what is Ebu? All right. So first of all, the people you are sending to us are doing so much first. That's right. right? Yeah. And so I don't want to put out like to people, oh, if you're not doing the things or at least yeah. working on the things, don't come just do Ebu for the heck of it. Okay? That's right. If you're a biohacker, if you're like healthy and just want kind of the anti-aging effects, like, yeah, you come do it. But if you're going through a health situation, make sure you're doing the things, make sure you're working with someone, whether it's us or you or some other health kind of provider, um, just to make sure you're doing those things. And then Ibu can come into the discussion. So that's why it's been so effective for your for the people yeah. you've sent to us. Thank and you. I think before I get to Ibu, I'll kind of touch on ozone because yeah, for it's sure. kind of this stepwise fashion. Ozone is, a lot of people know the ozone layer, ozone to measure smog. That's kind of like saying a fireman is bad because they're always at the fire. Ozone is there to actually mop up the smog. And ozone, let me make clear, we do not have a deficiency of ozone in our body. So Mm. this is something that we can add and use as a therapeutic modality when the time is right. Mm. Now, always with everything it's like what are the potential pros what are the potential cons and right. with ozone when done well like there's very little potential cons it's all potential pros and Amazing. that's why it's such this exquisite 
therapy that's been around for half a century, but kind of more in Europe and hasn't really made its way over into the U.S. until maybe the last 10, 20 years, much more so. And you can go all the way from things that are very mildly ozone therapy, kind of like ozonated olive oil, right? Topically Mm. for something. You can do some limb bagging with ozone for ulcers that are not healing or infections of the skin that are not healing. You can do ozone in the ears, which is great for ear infections. I mean, takes away great for sinus issues. You can do rectal ozone or vaginal ozone. And then it's kind of stepwise up the ladder. You can do IV ozone like MAH, major autohemotherapy, where you take out a little bit of blood, put it in a bag, squirt a little ozone in that bag, mix it up, and it drips back into you. And that's a fantastic therapy. MAH is what that's called for short. And then there's 10-pass ozone. And 10-pass is a little bit more intense, a great therapy. But then there's a step above that is, or I consider it a step above that, is EBU, which stands for extracorporeal, that means outside of the body, oxygenation and ozonation. And I consider this, I call it the creme de la creme of ozone therapy. And it has this ability. Well, before I talk about ozone, I just kind of ozone in general. I It does a lot of things in the body, but I like to think of it doing three things. One, it lowers unnecessary or undesirable inflammation. And then two, it modulates the immune system. So if someone's a little bit hyperimmune, autoimmune, it can mm. kind of lower it. And if someone doesn't have enough immune system, it kind of bumps it up. And then number three, it creates energy, i.e. ATP in the mitochondria. So it creates energy, literal energy in our body at the cellular level. And those are kind of the three pillars that I generally think of ozone doing in the body. And so the question becomes in the right situation, how can we get a really good dose in a really gentle way? And that's what Ibu does. And it's we're taking blood through an IV out of one arm and back into another. And it goes through this filter so you can see your blood outside of the body. And but then crossing that blood while the blood goes up, the ozone comes in the opposite direction and through that filter. And there's like hundreds of these little straws in there with each of those straws, if you picture them being perforated. So each straw has hundreds of little holes in it. And if you spread that all out on a flat surface, it would be like this blood kind of gently rushing over that surface Mm. while the ozone comes on the underside and comes in contact through all of those holes. And so you get this massive surface area of blood that's constantly just being gently ozonated and so that's how we do it. That's kind of the process. And yeah, where to go from there? What do you? Yeah, want? no, what that was interesting. No, you had me like I was. You were. It was like you're reading me a bedtime story. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. I was like, Wait wow, it. I let's didn't nerd know. out. <laughs> This is what happens when you're like a, a, a lover of the human body. Um, so just so everybody knows, you literally have two IVs, one on one arm, one on the other. Blood is being pulled out and then it's being recycled and put back in. The re- Where I got excited about it, and I know this is a question everybody wants to know, which is when it's going through this filter, what toxins are being pulled out? Because where you know after doing heavy metal detox and so and mold detoxes and gut detoxes for so long i was pretty excited when people were saying you know a couple sessions of this and you are really getting rid of a huge toxic load now i also know you and i have ha- talked you know quite a bit about this that you know there we can't make claims that it does heavy metals we are strongly convinced that it pulls out pathogens. So I, you know the science better than me, but do we have any idea what it's pulling out? So in the beginning, Ibu came on the scene in the U.S. like four-ish years ago. We have done, by the way, we've done, I, th- I feel like we're coming up probably on 2,000 of them. So wow. probably done more than anywhere else in the country, I believe. I could be wrong, totally fine if I'm wrong. On that, but we've done a lot. And in the beginning, it was kind of like, oh, there's tons of toxins coming out of the body because mm-hmm. when that blood, so 
what you're talking about is there's this like container and yes. you end up with fluid and foam yes. at the end. And it's like, that's toxins right there. And in the beginning, that was the belief. And then I started to kind of question that because I didn't want to overstate what we were doing. Like I want to be fully transparent. And so for a long time, I was like, I am not so sure about that. I think so, but I'm not sure. We don't have the testing. However, over the last year, I would say, and especially more recently, there have been people, doctors who have cut those filters open and looked at it under the microscope and found parasites, bacteria. So we know that there's, it's like the, the filter is like a Velcro mm-hmm. a- attracting those. And there's uh, more evidence that it is definitely pulling out heavy metals yeah. and I'll just say other toxins. Mm -hmm. So it is pulling those things out. My question is, and I just, I don't know, and I'll probably know more at some point in time, I hope, how much is it pulling out? Yeah. Yeah. And how significant is that? Because we are also, because we're just like this, during an EBU session, it's like we're only covering what's in the blood. We're Mm -hmm. not covering, it's not like it's going to suck out everything in the tissues, which Ooh. is where most of our toxins actually are. They're most stuck toxins, in the our body is smart enough to kind of ah. tuck it away so that it's not in our blood because it's trying to protect our brain, right? Yep. We want as few toxins in there as possible. And so that's part of my question. Now, ozone also like speeds up phase one and phase two of liver detoxification process. So just the ozone itself is actually detoxing. Mm. aside from whatever's whatever's being pulled out yeah and then we also do like we do we give people a little bit of hydrogen beforehand via those tablets we're giving humic acids and fulvic acids before them as well those are great at binding toxins Mm -hmm. and so if we're if the ozone is speeding up phase one phase two of the liver detoxification process and then we're giving humic acids fulvic acids to help bind those it's going to draw out toxins, right, without right. the side effects, without the unwanted side effects. And then if we're pulling some out in it, you know, it's pulling some out, right? And, right. and I'm, if you're doing a series of eboos, it's going to be pulling more out. Right. So, yeah, there's a lot to unpack there. Yeah, like what if you put a methylator in the, like, to, like if, it's, if you're trying to get to the stuck t- toxins and tissues, could you like do a couple of days of a, a good methylator before yeah. to just kind of yeah. push it all out. Yeah, I would, I would think so. I mean, so we do a pre nutrient IV as well. Yeah. It has the methylated B, B12 in there, but I, I love that. I like just adding in, having people take some like trimeth TMG or betaine, yep. choline, like all those methylators would probably be a very good idea. I have recommended that to some people, but it's not like our standard protocol, but I love the right. way you're thinking because it makes sense. Yeah, just to, to get it out. Now, I will tell you yeah. in the in the people that I've sent you, there's been a couple patterns that I have seen. Anything to do with mold seems to work incredibly well. Yes. Like people who are in a bad mold situation, that is like a game changer. Mm-hmm. I taught, you know, Epstein-Barr virus definitely seemed to do something there. And the most recent, which we can talk about a little more afterwards, but she's been also very public about the work that we're doing together is Lisa Bilyeu. And I think the last time we did Ibu, she had a rough go, but we hit a parasite. And I th- it came out in her stools. And oh, this was cool. as of information I just learned two days ago. And she tr- described to me what was in her stools. And I'm like, oh, my God, we hit a parasite. The Ibu is mobilizing parasites. And she has some in serious digestive issues. So yeah. I do think that there is like I, I look at our toxic bucket. I really like that analogy that you start to get. You've got mold and candida and lime and parasites and heavy metals and plastics and like all these things and people's buckets are so high. And when you go to Ibu, my feeling, and this is the way I explain it, is we start to lower the toxic load. We just, yeah. we just don't know how, how much we're lowering it, but there becomes a point when you lower it enough that the body can take over and it can heal itself. And yeah. I think that's why you can get away with like three Ibu sessions and then you start to see all the other things work so much more efficiently. 
Is that what you guys are noticing as well? Or am I the, is it just in the patients I've sent you? Yeah, no, that's, that's totally true. We, I mean, we've had people come from all over the U S for the, especially for the mold and, and Lyme for yeah. sure. So that, that totally fits yeah. your experience fits. Yeah. Yeah. So talk about methylene blue, because when I get Ebu, just so I get methylene blue with it, I know you don't do that with everybody, but what is, me- it's methylene blue by itself is quite a popular IV that mm-hmm. everybody's getting. So talk about that. Yeah, where to go with that one? That's that's a whole <laughs> podcast. Right? Well, I, just, so, just so you know, I did do a whole podcast with John on methylene blue, oh, like perfect. about a year so ago. So if people, people want to go know, back and listen to, to Dr. Right. John Laurent yeah. about methylene blue, because he's he's brilliant when it comes to methylene blue. So Agreed. do go back and listen to that. Maybe put a link in. in we will. In that's a great episode. idea. We'll put a link in the notes. Yeah, because methylene blue is just as a little backstory, first drug on patent in the US in like the late 1880s. And so again, kind of like ozone, this is not something our body is deficient in. Mm. We're not deficient in methylene blue. However, just like ozone, what are the potential pros versus what are the potential cons? And the more I use uh, methylene blue, the more I just like fall in love with it as a something that we can exogenous that we can take to help up level our health. There is almost like, again, everything in proper dosing. Yeah. If you're using proper dosing, there's almost no ill side effect right. from methylene blue. So even though our body's not deficient in it, it is, it's this exquisite medication. And I, I, Think of it as a medication. It's over the counter. It can be done orally, liquid, suppositories, IV, right? And methylene blue, it does a lot of things in the body. However, probably one of the kind of what it does or what it's most well known for is it helps the mitochondria. Mm -hmm. And the mitochondria, I'm sure you've talked a lot about the mitochondria, but the mitochondria being the uh, energy producers, the ATP producers, in each cell. And that's really our, our currency, energetic currency of the body, right? And so anything we can do to help improve the health of the mitochondria is a good thing. And yeah. methylene blue, there's like, there's what's called the electron transport chain in the mitochondria. And the electron transport chain, there's actually multiple areas that can get poisoned or poisoned by too much toxins. Right. And so every nobody really has like the perfect mitochondria nowadays because we live in the world we live in, oh, that's the toxic world that we live in. And so I read in, in one PubMed study, there's like 11 areas in the electron transport chain that be, can become leaky or Ooh. produce the reactive oxygen species, which is like too much uh, is bad, basically creates damage at the cellular level. And the methylene blue can kind of go in and insert itself in a number of different areas of the electron transport chain and make energy production more efficient. It actually creates, it allows for the body to use oxygen more efficiently. Mm -hmm. And then it's actually activated by light, that free photobiomodulation device in the sky it actually activates <laughs> the, the methylene sun? blue. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and together they actually increase energy, ATP in the body. And that's that's like hands down one of the best things that it does. It does other things too. And so again, it's like, why would we do it IV to get it fully absorbed mm, mm. quickly? It- now, the, I, we have, both Leanne and I have mentioned a brain, like, and, and I've had other people say this too, there's sort of a brain brightness that happens mm-hmm. when you're, and, and now our brain probably, if I come to think of it, ha- has a significant amount of mitochondria. So it could just be that you're getting more ATP in the brain. But there is a, you know, I call it, I think I told you this last time I was in there, like I call it Ibu drunk. When I leave and I get my methylene blue with my Ibu, I feel like I'm, drunk in all the right ways like yeah just happy energized focused like there is just like somebody did something to my body and what i love about it is it's like it just enhanced what was already there 
So do we have a- anything on methylene blue that we would know around like serotonin or dopamine? Like, does it change any neurotransmitters? Yeah, it does. It, it, that's one of the, like, if you go, if someone goes and Googles like side effects of methylene blue, mm-hmm. you might read about serotonin syndrome because it does upregulate serotonin, which is why you feel better. However, the, what you'll read is like, oh, methylene blue in too high of doses can be dangerous. Well, the doses that become too dangerous are crazy high. So just to give an idea, it's like over a thousand milligrams in a day, right? Consistently and probably more like 4,000 milligrams. Now, different people will recommend different doses. And I recommend all the way from like one milligram for some people, maybe upwards of a hundred milligrams for some people in different Mm -hmm. scenarios. So we're talking levels that are way, way, way below that. And you'll read, I've searched myself out of curiosity and you'll read about, oh, if you're on a antidepressant medication, beware. Mm -hmm. Totally not true. You know, partially I think because so much of why people are on antidepressants is because of a lack of cellular energy. Mm. Right? If our brains are not, if our mm. brains don't have enough ATP, like I'm going to be foggy. I'm going to be easier depressed. Mm. I'm going to like our, our brains. Just, so so if you're, if you can literally light up the brain with enough energy, Oh, I'm going to see things brighter. Right. Like metaphorically speaking. So I am not worried. Again, I'll go back to the very beginning of the methylene blue discussion and the the potential downsides outside of doing just crazy, crazy high doses are just so minimal. Yeah. Yeah. We've come to, you know, I've come down to like really simple supplements because of doing EBU regularly, methylene blue regularly, the NAD suppositories, like it's pretty, you know, we've dialed in some of these mitochondrial nutrients or, or fuel sources that really clean up that system. So, yeah, I would, I would agree with everything you just said. Yeah, and I, like, I think methylene blue, like some methylene blue tablets or suppositories yeah. ought to be in everybody's emergency kits. Ooh, ooh. I mean, because if you have a heart attack, stroke, if you ooh. have an infection, like yeah. all of those things, like it helps. I... I actually had COVID like symptoms pretty recently and I just started pounding methylene blue Mm -hmm. and that was orally because it wasn't near the office and I didn't feel well enough to go into the office, frankly, for an IV. And I turned that thing around, I had 12 hours of fever and then I was like, I I was good after almost, almost immediately. And like I know my body and I don't get sick too often, but that was like the beginning typically, like historically speaking, that was the beginning of a three to five days where I'm just like down for the count. Right. And yet 12 hours after I started feeling bad and it, and that one just hit me like a semi truck mm. 12 hours later, I kind of was shocked. I'm like, am I really feeling this good? Yeah, I am. And it's, it's because I was pounding the, the methylene yeah. blue. You know, I to- I gave my literary agent had COVID and I said, here, you got to order these methylene blue trochies. And she did. And two days later, she's like, I don't know what those magic blue things are that you just gave me, but like, mm-hmm. it's completely gone. So yeah. I-, I really agree with that. Have we seen with long, ha- like long haulers, have we seen Ibu at all really help with people who've mm-hmm. had long haul COVID symptoms? Yeah, just like you were saying, like how it kind of lights you up. Which is what it does for me as well. I I find after one of those, I can go on a run, and it's just like I'm I'm flying. Basically, it's like yeah. w- little wings are helping me along, and so yeah, long haul long long haul COVID, absolutely, yeah, yeah, brilliant. Yeah, way. and I and and I think because that that's like I don't know. Are you getting more long haul COVID patients? It seems like a lot of people are talking mm-hmm. about it still, still. Yeah, yeah. I mean it it. That whole process definitely does a number on many people's physiology. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So and it takes it, it takes a little bit of it takes a lot of extra special care to to bring people back up to where they ought to be. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I love this discussion, and I I always make sure I make my eboo appointments when I know you're there, so you and I can geek Good. out on this stuff. Yeah. <laughs> I love that. 
I just, I'm like always when you're around, I'm like, there's something in the brain there for me to learn. What can I ask him? What can I ask him? And, and just, vice versa. Uh, thank you. Well, it's and and I love when I go in there, I get red light on my head and you guys have like heating packs. I mean, you're just, the whole experience is so great. We, so. we just today added grounding in. So Ooh. we have a little grounding accord. So yeah, there's oh. maybe another thing coming to that too. So, oh, I yeah, love just always that. always looking at how to like up level it a little bit. It's so fun. I, I feel like you could turn me into a superhuman. It's, it's amazing. So where do people find you? Before I ask you the last question, I just want people to know about you, know about your clinic and yeah, like brag away, like let us know how we can, we can get people to you. Mm, thank you. So probably go to dryoshi.com. That's D-R-Y-O-S-H-I.com. And there, there's a link to Oasis Family Medicine, who, where you can get Ibu if that's of interest and appropriate. And then there's a little link to the, the, the LIVE method, which stands for longevity and basically vitality. And it's a mm. little six-month program where we go through everything we just talked about. Amazing. Amazing. Okay, well, this is going to be a fun question for you. And one that I probably would have just asked you, like in the office, because it's more complicated than it appears. What is does health mean to you? If somebody was to say, are you healthy? What is your measurement of health? And how would you describe health? Yeah, I love that. Um, so I would... I will take that health and actually ramp it up to vitality or mm, like that. vibrancy. Because I think when we talk about health and wellness, it's definitely better than disease or dis diseased and hopefully a little bit better than okay. But then the question is like, how do we take that and like really up level some right? Right. Right. And so I know if I think of myself, how am I vibrant? Mm. And that's when I'm all those things that we talked about at the beginning, right? The the sleeping well, moving well, eating right, eating well, hydrating well, which that each of these are its own separate podcast. Yeah. Again, the photobiomodulation, the sun, the earth, the air, the awareness, the connection, the for me it's spirituality. Just like the belief of something greater, whether that's, you know, the force or God or magic or whatever that is for someone. But all of those things, when I'm doing and focusing and being those things, it's like, then I can feel vibrant. And and how I, how do I know that I'm on track? It's if I roll out of bed and I can move freely, mm. feeling good and feeling vibrant, and I have the body energy like, hmm, okay, I'm feeling good, like ready to mm. tackle the day with some passion and vibrant in my mind. Mm, I love that. Happy, aware, grounded. That's how I know that I'm on track. Yeah. And then the extra little piece is get the objective data, mm -hmm. right? Because I don't want something to sneak up on me where I That's think right. I'm like rosy colored glasses, but something sneaks up and pulls the rug out from under me. So that's where the objective data can just like take everything I just said and up level it. That was incredible. Well, thank you, Dr. Yoshi. I, I again, I adore you. I love what you're up to. I love picking your brain. Um, Ibu has just been one of those things that it just all the heavy metal de detoxing I have done with people. This has been a game changer. So, so thank you for being such a, ma a master of it. Just keep up the great work. And I, I look forward to years of collaboration with you because what you're doing and your heart and your vision is just spectacular. So yeah. back at you. So thank, thank you. Thank you. Appreciate you.